I refrained myself from rumbling incoherently as idealized version of myself kept telling me professionals have standards. I therefore kept trying to reach for the bar I set for myself in critique of what is practically one incomprehensible mess. And if professional game developers can't patch properly their bloody game, why should I, random internet moron, commit sudoku over every bloody mistake I make? Speaking of professional game developers, I guess most of them took their paid leave during the last two months to be fresh and ready for when XPAC drops, but that isn't an excuse, no justification for the state of the bloody patch. And I'm not even complaining about balance. I'm complaining that they even failed to ship Crackshot change properly. Crackshot was supposed to no longer reduce cooldowns of longbow, rifle and harpoon gun skills. It still does reduce cooldown of a skill. One singular skill. No skills in longbow have their cooldowns affected. No skills in harpoon gun have their cooldowns affected by the crackshot and neither do most rifle skills. Only brutal shot in all its glory has its cooldown currently being reduced by equipping crackshot. I know your QA department is busy with some wizard shit getting Ascalon, but that is little too noticeable to be lost in the overall chaos. I have to give a credit to whoever designed new hit this hole. It topped banner spam in just how incredibly bad can feature feel to use. Of course, they had to give this thing an internal cooldown. Otherwise, decapitate would make everything too easy. However, theoretically, Warrior can upkeep full quickness in full DPS gear with the big damage traits available. Theoretically. Because trying to juggle your DPS, your rage upkeep and that deep shice on top feels as relaxing as combination of exhibitionism, contact spots and beekeeping. I had games on Power Weaver that felt less punishing than trying to upkeep quickness on myself in a frogging golem room. And that's not the fault of the quickness duration per se. You can go full divinance and still lose your shit. Both your primal bursts, your weapon swap and your quickness source have the same cooldowns. But one of them isn't affected by alacrity and swapping your weapons changes your burst to hit the soul cooldown relation. On top of which, blood reckoning changes it again and you have to use it to maintain rage. Because if you drop out of rage, Suddenly both of your bursts have longer cooldowns and the brunt of your damage just goes to Narnia. This feels as bad as learning Weaver in ranked with hidden UI. Because of arbitrary requirements to hit your burst every interval hit the soul creates, every cooldown discrepancy is highlighted and put on the pedestal, making it seem as if all moving parts deliberately work against each other. And what frustrates me the most is that there are many potential ways Warrior could grant quickness, and Nefs just went forward and chose the worst. You could give Berserker, quickness application on cast of rage skill, which Zerker already has to use to upkeep rage. Way to share quickness the same way Phalax strength shares might. Quickness generation on gaining and expanding fire aura from King of Fires. Being already forced to spam rage skills, quickness generation on said skills would make for the most seamless transition from no quickness to yes quickness, practically maintaining the same gameplay with no noticeable difference. Sharing quickness you gain for yourself is also a viable option, as Warrior has enough selfish quickness generation to go down that path. Axe offhand dual strike grants base 4 seconds of quickness, and trait aggressive onslaught grants 3 seconds every time you land a CC. That way, Mace Axe Quickzerker would end up with enough quickness in his main weapon set before concentration, especially when Headbutt and Wild Blow would do some of the lifting. Finally, Fire Aura interaction. What I like in King of Fires is its boldness to go and attempt giving Warrior something more than 6th weapon skill as his class mechanic. 
something happens there under the surface, and because of it gameplay has more depth to it than Flat Earth Theory. What King of Fires fails at is building on top of its own foundation. There is not enough of a mechanic within this mechanic to make it interesting, and therefore it only leads to more spam. However, even scuffed aura mechanics are at least not shoving wrenches in their own goulash, and if you want to play Condi Quickness Berserker, you already have to put up with them no matter what. Each of these would be better. Ain't it chose against picking something within already convoluted system and just gluing quickness to the side of it, and instead chose to add another variable, effectively making what was already bad for mental health even crogging worse. Ain't stubborn stance of making everything from healing to boon application be directly connected to best is actively hurting the warrior as a class. You can't rely on one mechanic to do everything for you, especially if that mechanic is basically 6th weapon skill. Warrior needs more going for it under the surface. I shouldn't be able to say Berserker has the most depth out of warrior specs and that be both technically correct and near depressing to say. Continuing off of Berserker's presumed depth, Arc Divider. Divided Zerkes player base between enthusiasts of new and old design. And to no surprise, old design was pretty fun and clearly better in certain PvE scenarios, while new deals less damage but it's faster and more consistent. New Divider is without a question better in PvP as its burst and high area of effect grant both 1v1 power and teamfight presence. Even though cast time is reduced to accommodate damage going down, New Divider is still technically a DPS nerf, and so do both regular and flaming flurry changes. Don't get me wrong, these changes are still great for PvP and for functionality, but they also still come at cost of PvE damage output. And so, Berserker's power and Condi DPS were nerfed, despite it being already inferior to Spellbreaker and Bladeswall. On top of which, hit the soul, which used to increase condition damage by 240, no longer does. And it means another nerf to Zerkes DPS. Also, if anyone remembers, Torch exists. Torch is already outshined in Condi builds by Sword Offhand, and Torch received no compensation buffs for loss of its damage from its signature trait and its cooldown in PvP nerfed with removal of previously mentioned. Torch is currently not even a joke, as jokes are supposed to be funny and this is just sad. Only thing you could use Torch for in this patch is fabricating fire aura, which would be good on Ellie, but here is worthless, especially when Longbow Burst does the same thing better where it counts. Speaking of Ellie. What the fuck actually goes on with Signets? Who thought to himself, let's put 5 more skills that just give you auras for free in Elementalist's toolkit? And how did we miss that disaster in the patch notes? Oh yeah, I, I forgot, everyone was busy mourning death of Scourge who ironically gained popularity after the patch and in PvP from all places. Let's just say that corrupting boons into torment is flavorful for Necromancer and certainly less bullshice than corrupting stability into fear, but let's also say that 15 stacks of torment combined with demonic law and Necromancer's regular condition pressure is a bit much. Especially considering all of that is still technically on a support with get out of jail free card for branded allies on 20 seconds cooldown. Speaking of brain dead, let's return to Signet Ellie for a moment. Traits like elemental shielding, searing auras and especially staunch auras were balanced back by the fact that Ellie had to perform either a mini game or spend a lengthy cooldown to get an aura, just casually dropping entire skill bar worth of low cooldown skills with passive effects and no discouragement against spamming combined with Scepter's unbelievably skill-dependent damage output, created a bloody feculent disaster of a putrid build that is unfun to play as, with or against, 
is both strong and oppressive, is obnoxious and difficult to play around while also requiring roughly as much skill as shitting your pants does. I can pick that build up and not just play but succeed with it in gold free lobbies, which is high considering there are barely 200 people in platinum and above, and funny thing is, Ellie was supposed to be this difficult to play, skill dependent class and was balanced around it. Meanwhile, this build is so brain dead you could pick a particularly bright hamster and it would climb to gold with that build. And as a proof, me playing it. Such skill. It is a disaster. Rarely a patch comes and leaves game in the worse state than it was before. Fortunately, that's very probably because everyone on board is busy polishing expansion and we won't see much disasters going forward. Or at least, that's what I'm hoping for. Crap face out.